good morning. Uh, my name is Michael Schlein. I'm the CEO of Axion. We're a global nonprofit dedicated to creating a, a, a fair and inclusive economy, one that works for uh, everyone. Uh, today, we're going to talk about accelerating financial inclusion. But before we get into um, accelerating financial inclusion, um, I want to talk about, well, why should you care? Why should you even care about financial inclusion? So um, for all of us here, we, have, we take for granted, and we should take for granted, that we have credit cards, we have ATMs, we have debit cards, you can get insurance for your home, you can get um, uh, loans to go to school, or lo loans to buy a home, um, and we take for granted that um, your income, your bills come in monthly, and your income comes in monthly, and all of that is very, very convenient. But for two billion people, two billion people, they have none of that, and their lives are so much harder uh, than they need to be. Um, we can change that. Let me, let me introduce you to um, Virginia. Now, so Virginia is very typical of the, ex uh, the excluded population. She's a farmer in rural Kenya. Now think about this. She gets paid once, maybe twice a year at the time of the harvest. She has to make that money work all year long, and yet she lacks a safe place to save. Just even think about that phrase, a safe place to save. We take that for granted. She does not have that. She may have to, she lives in an area that gets droughts and floods, but no one will give her insurance. She may have to go three hours to make a single payment in cash in order to keep her kids in school or to keep the lights on. And no one will give her credit um, uh, to help bu build her business. Um, now, we can change all that, and we have all the tools. Uh, entrepreneurs coming to conferences like this have built the tools that we need so we can really make a difference. So in our lifetime, I believe we can really create a, a fair and inclusive economy. So today, um, we are living at an incredible moment in human history. In our lifetimes, over the last several decades, hundreds of millions of people have moved out of poverty. The trend has just only gone in one direction until today. For the first time in any of our lifetimes, the trends are going in the wrong direction. Poverty is increasing. Hundreds of millions of people are falling back into poverty. Um, it started with the pandemic, but it's accelerating with the climate crisis, uh, um, supply chain challenges, inflation, global instability, war, uh, all of that. We are now seeing people fall back into poverty. So the work that we're trying to do is more important today than ever. Plus, we've seen over the last decade uh, and then accelerated in the pandemic, um, tremendous um, um, digital acceleration where people we've never been able to reach before, people like Virginia, all of a sudden now we can reach them through mobile phones. Uh, during the course of the pandemic, um, 160 governments created um, digital cash transfer programs to reach people living in poverty, and most of them were being reached for the first time, and most of them were being reached digitally. So these are the new rails, and a lot of what we're trying to do is ride these whales and bring these higher level financial services. So. Um, we've created, so we're a very, very active early stage investor in fintech for inclusion. Uh, Axion Venture Lab is one of the leaders in the world. And what you see here is a map of some of the um, really amazing, innovative companies uh, all around the world who are using new technologies to um, reach people we've never been able to reach before. So in the world of financial services for the poor, people like Virginia, it used to be that the distances were insurmountable. Today, there's no such thing as a distance that's insurmountable. It used to be that the transaction sizes were too small to be commercially viable. No one even thinks that anymore. There's no such thing as a transaction size that's too small to be commercially viable. It used to be impossible to get to know Virginia uh, from afar, but today, with her digital footprint, we can get to know her and know her needs and know her financial needs and meet those needs. So this digital revolution is allowing us to rethink how we bring financial services to the poor, and that's exactly what these um, companies are doing all around the world. Um, and a few of them are here today. So um, there's a great company in Pakistan called 
Trucker, which is working with uh, independent truckers and providing them with digital tools to manage their business. And then when you can see their data, you can provide working capital. Um, Sheriyar Bawani, the CEO and founder, is here today. Um, also, Khazna in Egypt is the fastest growing super app in, in Egypt today, reaching over a million people. And the founder and CEO, Omer Saleh, uh, is also here. But let me go back to Virginia for a second. She is today a client of um, Apollo Agriculture. Uh, Apollo started in Kenya and now is expanding into Nigeria. Um, Apollo is using global satellite data and with that satellite data, and by the way, in the last few years, global satellite data has gotten incredibly high quality and incredibly cheap, and Apollo is leveraging that data. And from that data, they can see when there's a drought, they can see when there's a flood, they can actually uh, monitor soil condition and cloud coverage and provide agronomic advice. And all of a sudden, Virginia, um, she can get insurance for the first time, crop insurance, and she can get working capital. Uh, and it's all because of this di digital revolution. And oh, by the way, Apollo just got um, a soft bank check for $10 million, and uh, uh, they're reaching hundreds of thousands of people today, and they plan to double in the next couple of years. Um, that's the kind of innovation that we're seeing. Um, let me introduce you to uh, a woman named Faith, who um, is in Kenya also. And she runs a very small mom-and-pop pharmacy. And if you think about that, um, she's on the front lines, uh, especially during the pandemic. She, um, think about a pharmacy. Uh, what she has on her shelf is everything. If she has the right drugs, people get what they need. Um, if she doesn't have enough, people get sick, and if she has too much, she ends up throwing out expired drugs and pharmaceuticals and then throwing out her profits. Um, so if, she, if we can use predictive analytics, artificial intelligence, predictive analytics, to tell her what to put on her shelf, that is invaluable to her. That's exactly what field intelligence is doing. But they go further. Field is a logistics company, so not only do they tell her what to put on their shelf, but they deliver it. And um, uh, this is in the in African context. Um, Field is trying to radically simplify the medical supply chain throughout the continent of Africa. And in fact, today, Field is the fastest growing medical supply company in the, on the continent. Um, so they deliver those drugs and pharmaceuticals, um, and so she really only has to pay for what she can sell. So on average, when you plug into Field, you can increase your revenues by over 40%. Again, that's just uh, the example of the kinds of innovation uh, that we're seeing that can really make a difference. We also um, created Quona. So Venture Lab works at the seed level. Quona works at the Series A and Series B level. Same thesis, FinTech for inclusion, incredible innovation. Um, and between the two portfolios, it's really working. We now have seven unicorns. Um, we used to work very, very hard to find these innovative companies, and now they fi find us. Um, in the seed portfolio, many of you have, have seed companies. In the world of seed, about 25% of any seed-funded company ever gets to Series A. Uh, in our portfolio, 80% are getting to Series A. So something is working, uh, and increasingly, we've become a bit of a magnet where people come to... We used to work hard to find these companies, now they come to find us. Um, but it, it, um, So between Venture Lab and Kona, we see a lot all around the world. In addition, we also work with banks and microfinance institutions, where we're, we're an active investor in all of these. Um, and we are helping them to digitally transform. And we have a team of uh, an advisory team of 50 consultants that do nothing but get hired by uh, banks and microfinance institutions to help them leverage all that new technology. Um, we also have created the one of the leading think tanks in this field, uh, the Center for Financial Inclusion, which does a series of great research, including on uh, consumer protection, climate change, data, uh, gender, um, all some of the obstacles, and then, of course, some of the solutions to try to create a more inclusive world. Um, hang on. OK. There, there you go. Um, so where are we heading? So this is what we're doing today. Where are we heading tomorrow? Uh, there are three areas that we're very, very excited about. One is embedded finance. Um, one is agritech. 
and another one is the future of work. In embedded finance, if you think about it, it used to be you had to go to a financial service provider to get financial services. But in the last few years, we've discovered the key to unlocking financial services for the poor is data. And every company is today a data company. So every company has the ability to be a financial service provider, which is changing who we're working with. Uh, it's changing what we do when we work with them. And it also changes who we can reach. So it's very, very exciting uh, to leverage. So all of a sudden, now we're working with platforms and consumer good companies far beyond traditional microfinance and traditional traditional fintech uh, for inclusion. In agritech, um, I showed you those maps. It used to be that um, you'd see very, very few, if any, um, agritech innovation. And today, I can point out uh, uh, nearly a dozen companies that we're working with, like Apollo, like Pula, like Agrim, like Terra Magna, that are all leveraging new technology to reach those smallholder farmers. And why do, I, why do we care about smallholder farmers? When I talk about 2 billion people being left out of and poorly served by the global financial system, 2 thirds of them are smallholder farmers. So this is who we're trying to reach. Um, the last billion people that we reached are easier than the next billion people. Uh, they were more urban, now we're going to more rural and more smallholder farmers. And then the future of work. The nature of work itself is changing. Um, uh, the gig worker of today is the, the microfinance client uh, of, of yesterday. I was just chatting earlier with uh, Brian Dempsey, who's here, who's the founder and CEO of uh, Power Financial Wellness, started out in Kenya, now in Uganda and Tanzania. And he's building a business that specifically is trying to meet the financial needs of gig workers. And that's, that's a population that is just continuing to grow all around the world. Um, let me go back to... Um, let me try to go back to Virginia. OK. There she is. Um, we have the ability. We have the technology. Uh, it's just not spread around, but we can really leverage this. Now, it's all, now, I'm obviously very, very bullish on using technology to bring financial services to the poor. But let me also talk a little bit about some of the downsides. Almost all of these companies, in some way, um, are leveraging how you use your phone as a proxy for um, are you a good credit risk. So the person who um, um, tops up his phone, tops up her phone, or recharges her phone is more likely to repay a loan than the person who runs out of power or runs out of money. Um, that makes some sense, except for one thing, when you realize that even at the base of the pyramid, men have their own phone. Women have the family phones, so women's phones systematically are running out of power and money. So we're designing algorithms that are systematically discriminating against women. We need to do better. This is not just about financial services for the poor. This is all about um, algorithms generally, which of course increasingly is algorithms are driving what we see, what we know, what we eat, what we watch, what we. Um, so we have to all as a society get a lot more sophisticated about uh, how we use these incredibly powerful tools because they can be biased. Our think tank recently just put out a paper uh, discussing these. Again, it's time we need to get much more sophisticated about this. Um, This is the golden age. Uh, this is this this moment of innovation. Um, if you work in my line of work and you've been trying to bring financial services to the poor, uh, all of a sudden you feel like we can do this. We can do this in our in our lifetime. Again, and, and frankly, we need people like you all around the world. Um, you're working with technology. You're working. Some of you are doing fintech, and some of you are working in emerging markets. What we're really trying to do is show that you can have a huge social impact and great financial returns. This is a, an enormous market. Um, these are great companies, but what we're really trying to do is, is show that this is a market. So every one of us has a phone in his or her pocket right now, and all of us assume the next three years, you're going to have a better phone. And it doesn't really matter if it's Apple or you know, uh, you know, Google or whoever is going to create that phone, because you know there's a whole industry that is competing and innovating to meet your, your, your mobile phone needs. That's what we're trying to do in financial services for the poor. These are great companies. Some of them are going to um, um, you know, change the world. 
But what we're really trying to do is show that you can have an industry designed to serve these two billion people, and that industry will compete and innovate, and whether or not these companies survive, um, they'll be the next generation of companies, because what we're really trying to do is show um, that there's a huge market. We're also trying to attract capital to this sector. So um, we, we've arranged um, several different funds, and we're not only trying to show you have a great impact, but also um, very, very attractive financial returns, because that's how the capital markets work. If we can drive capital into this sector and we can help um, uh, target it to the companies that are growing, we can really uh, change the nature of the capital markets, bring capital to this sector, and then um, bring financial services to two billion people who today are left out. Um, so uh, that's what we're trying to do. Uh, hopefully we can enlist you, and if we succeed, we can, um, um, uh, we can change the world. We can actually create a financially inclusive world uh, in our lifetime. Um, I, I should mention, uh, increasingly, climate issues are also displacing people all around the world. So in addition to um, gig workers, we're also starting to see uh, the refugee population that also has um, extraordinarily and unique financial needs. If you think about it, the, the refugees who have to leave their, uh, their history in one country and come to a different country, we have to find new ways of meeting um, their needs too. That's a growing problem. Uh, tens of millions of people have been displaced by war, but increasingly millions of people are being displaced by climate. So that is a, a new area and a new challenge. Um, and again, gig workers, refugees all have unconventional needs. They have unpredictable income. they hard to get insurance. Uh, they may have lost their credit history when they move from one country to another. Um, these are the challenges that we're facing. They're only getting worse. Uh, but again, um, the challenges we're facing today uh, make our work more and more imp important, plus the digital, um, um, the growth of digital infrastructure, the, the rails that are being built all around the world, um, uh, make the impact of our work greater. So if we can seize this moment, um, I, again, I think we can leverage all this new technology and really create a, a more inclusive world that works for everyone. So thank you very much. Thank you for coming, and uh, have a great web forum. <laughs>